Hi, this is a video from Zimmer Peacock where I want to talk really about uh, micro volume electrochemical experiments. So I sort of jump into it and sort of ask the question when people are often doing um, electroanalytical work or electrosynthetic work, uh, they will use volumes like 5 mils, 50 mils, 500 milliliters. Um, and they may think, oh, that's perfectly fine. But I might ask the question, why not just use 50 microliters? And I'll explain what I mean by that. Now, the advantage of going smaller volume is, basically, they're easier to set up these experiments. Therefore, you can get a higher throughput of experimentation. You get higher numbers of repeats for each experiment so that the data is more statistically, um, let's say, um, important. And also, it means that you um, your wastage, you know, in terms of solvents um, is at least in this study, you know, is, is or this um, video is several orders of magnitude decreased. So I think there's lots of efficiencies from going s small. People sort of think that the electrochemical experiment, especially when you're doing a synthesis, is actually to make the material, but it's not really. It's actually to collect the data. But let me go forward a little bit with this thesis. So the problem that I sort of see today is somebody's going to do um, an electro um, experiment, it could be electrocatalysis, it could be electrosynthesis, um, but they may have a setup that's a bit like this, um, where you have obviously the potential start, the laptop, and you have the electrochemical cell. Now these electrochemical cells um, can be quite large. Um, it's not unreasonable that they may be, you know, 50 uh, milliliters, and people kind of know what a pain they are to actually set up. So there's a sort of you know, you have to be respectful of, of your time and even, you know, academic and students' time because um, time is not so much money, but if you can use time more efficiently, then we can do more experiments, we get more data, and we can basically progress um, faster. So we need to kind of, I think, reduce um, the setup time and other things like the solvent use in these kind of experiments. So let me describe what I think. Um, so, you know, we have a typical kind of electrochemical cell like this. We have our um, reference and our working and our um, counter electrode in it. And just looking at these cells, you know, you know that you have to kind of get these electrodes, put them in there, click all the connectors up, um, put the solvent in there. Um, you know, it does essentially take efforts. Now, uh, at ZP, we have quite a strong background in the in vitro diagnostics world. So the technology now that I'm sort of showing on the um, far right here is um, actually a screen printed electrode and it has all the electrodes upon it and it also has quite a small size and i'll show why i think that's an advantage in um, many aspects of um, electrochemical research so for example in the previous cell if you wanted a carbon electrode you'd use something like maybe a sort of glassy disc electrode like this but actually when you use a screen printed electrode like this you get your working electrode you get your counter electrode and you get your reference electrode it's quite elegant the way that everything is um, on the same substrate. And I should quickly say that you'll see in some links that I will have, have underneath this video that we are talking about less than 50 euro cents each. So this is, you know, less than 50 cents US dollars, less than 50p UK pounds, less than 50 cents um, European um, euros, if I can put it that way. Um, so what we are talking about here is and this is something that we do quite re regularly is we'll take a screen printer electrode and um, we'll put it into one of our potential stats. You're not obliged to use one of our potential stats. We'll put a drop on like that and immediately we're good to go. This setup can take us far less than, you know, a minute. I mean, it takes some seconds to do what we're doing. And then we put the solution on that and we can do, um, in this case, we're doing electroanalytical work. So at ZP, we do make a lot of these screen printed electrodes and because of the nature of the business, we tend to do a lot of, as I say, as I stated already, electroanalytical work. But the question then is, why is this technology sort of reserved for electroanalytical work? Can we not bring it into um, electrocatalytic work or bring it into electrosynthesis work, um, et cetera? So you can get a perfectly good um, normal cycle of voltammogram, for example, out of something like a 50 microliter drop. When you look at this setup, um, there's no training cables, there's no sort of glass with screwing caps on, etc. Pipette, um, the solution on, sits on the tip of the um, electrode, as I've shown here. All the electrodes are immediately in place and you can get some good quality um, cyclovoltammetry out of that. Really no um, issues. I will extend and say that it's not limited to cyclovoltammetry. We can talk about um, 
coronary potentiometry, coronary amperometry, these can all be done. Um, how to use these screen protected electrodes. So here's the screen protected electrodes. Um, the object or the, the screen protected electrode will go into connectors and these connectors can be connected to uh, existing, I want to say power supplies or potential stats. Uh, so that electrode here is seven millimeters across. The slot on the front of this connector block is seven millimeters. So the connector slides into the connector block. And then at the back here, there's some um, banana plugs or banana receptacles. And then if you've got like a sort of potential stat, for example, like this, um, it has banana plugs. Now, these connectors come in two millimeter, three millimeter, four millimeter flavors. So you can take, if your potential stat has two millimeter uh, banana plugs on it, you need the two millimeter adapter. If you have three millimeter, use the three millimeter. If you have four millimeter, use the four millimeter. But we're pretty good at um, making an adapter that goes between the cables that are on the power supply or the potential stat, and then be basically being the glue between our screen protected electrode and the um, potential stat or power supply. I do want to say that um, I will have a list of um, uh, links underneath this video um, as well. So now I'll go forward a little bit. I just want to sort of dive straight um, a little bit into electrosynthesis at the moment. I think electrosynthesis, if you're interested, is actually the electrosynthesis or the electrocatalysis. I think it's a similar story really. But for example, I have an electrode here. Um, we can put a solution on top of it. We can do something like cyclovoltammetry. What's useful about that then is you can kind of figure out what's my you know ideal potential for my experiment. Um, I've chosen here to be under sort of um, diffusion control. Um, you can then set up a something like a um, current amperometric experiment um, where you're going to essentially fix um, the potential and just follow the current. Now, if I was talking about electrosynthesis um, in particular, because I have a bit of a background in it, you're going to we all know that you can have this current that kind of falls with time, um, and it'll, this fall with time could actually be quite quick. What I'm expecting is. I think that wrongly people think that the outcome of even an electrosynthesis should be the material itself. It's not. It's the data that you're really after. So um, you can do quick CV, decide what the um, potential that you're going to do that is. Don't change anything. Just stay on the screen printed electrode and now apply that um, poise potential and the current will drop with time. And if you want to use traditional analytical equipment like HPLC, LCMS, just take a tiny little aliquot off the drop and you can take them as a series of time and then you can put and rack those up on the HPLC. So it's kind of saying that this idea that you could get useful data out of a 50 microliter drop works really nicely because actually analytical equipment these days has got really quite sensitive. Um, and so you could have a tiny microliter experiment be just um, taking off a tiny little sample, putting it in a vial, diluting that up a bit, and then putting that on the um, HPLC system. And sort of, so you're not only got these sort of electrochemical data, but you can still have your traditional kind of um, analytical data at the same time as well. Um, I said I would put some useful links up here. Um, so if you want a carbon electrode, um, try and get through to the YouTube channel and you'll find these links underneath the video. This is the carbon electrode, this is the gold electrode, and this is the platinum electrode. They come in a big sheet like this. This sheet has 300 electrodes on it. I think it's, a, at least for the carbon, it's 250 euros. And you can essentially just pop out each electrode, just pop it out, use it. Now, this does overcome something quite interesting because um, electrochemistry often affects electrodes. So people end up either polishing them, but do they really polish them back to the original state? It's it's all fine, but it's all manual effort. And you know, manual effort is great, but I think the most valuable time that people actually have is their time sorry, the most valuable asset they have is their time. And so the idea that you'll use it, get the data. If you need to do the experiment again, get a new one, get the data. I mean, this is not a bad um, use of people's time, I would suggest. The bigger picture on this is, it's not really gonna be part of this video, is um, the bigger picture is, at the moment, I'm showing, I think, how to save time in the more electrosynthetic, electrocatalytic space. Um, but the bigger saving with with time will come um, when we start doing, uh, I want to say stuff like this. But what's, what I mean by stuff like this is um, we also have a robotic system, which actually allows you to then, if you can do a bit of scoping work in your lab, you can end up 
um, really scaling your discovery by actually using it on a robotic system. And that robotic system also works with um, a parallel potential stats that we have. So rather than doing one experiment, you can do six experiments at 50 microliters each. And imagine that now that, you know, essentially, you know, you have, if you did six, just six repeats, you've suddenly got a lot more statistical data or more data for statistical analysis than you did if at the moment. You probably do six sequential experiments and probably only do three anyway, because, um, you want to get the work done. Scale up is actually not such an issue either. Um, I do want to show you now that we also have um, little flow cells that can take these screen printed electrodes as well. I still think there's plenty of scope for, there's definitely plenty of scope for creativity because you've got to think about that flow through, you've got to think about that dwell time in the, in the flow cell. But I just want you to know that, you know, the idea that you, um, you could Parallel. When I say parallel, you know, you could go in a parallel nature using the robot. You could go in a parallel nature using um, the potential stat, or you could use the flow cell as well to, let's say, scale up um, is also a option. And again, useful links. Um, the robot is linked to the potential stat. There is linked to, it, and the flow cell is linked to. So I've just wanted to sort of bring together technologies that we use in electroanalytical space and in vitro diagnostics and it's all electrochemical based but how can we then use these in um, discovery in the more sort of synthesis um, side of electrochemistry so if you have any questions um, regarding this don't hesitate to reach out to us and be happy to have a conversation about it okay thanks very much